Sure. So it really is a scientific evaluation of the health of our lakes and streams in Minnesota. And what it involves is taking data that's been collected by the PCA, by other partners, by um, local groups, things like that, that meet quality assurance practices, so it's good quality data. And then evaluating that data compared to the things that we're trying to protect in Minnesota's waters. So we use that data to help us understand is the, is the water supporting swimming throughout the year? Is it supporting healthy fish and healthy bugs? And that's really what our water quality standards are, is those are the conditions that we're trying to achieve in the waters in order to protect those beneficial uses or swimming and fishing, things like that. In the last two years, as we've been monitoring in different places across the state, we've been to about 15 different watersheds. There's 80 watersheds across Minnesota. So there were about 580 places where we found that the water quality standards weren't being met. In some cases, those are different places, so different lakes and streams, but we often can find that certain um, standards aren't met or that multiple standards aren't met at the same place. So that doesn't necessarily represent five, 580 water bodies, but 580 instances where we're not fully protecting those things like swimming and fishing that Minnesotans care about, where we know we have a problem and we need to do something about it. The impaired waters assessment process is really a cumulative process. So every two years we're required to update the list based on new information. And because we haven't been throughout the whole state yet, we're about 75 to 80% through. Every time we go out and get more data, we're finding more problems. And it's because we're getting to places that we haven't evaluated in the past. So these 583 impairments are being added to the existing list and it'll bring our total up to about 4,600. This really isn't a representation of are things getting better or worse. Because it's our first time through the whole state, it's really about getting that baseline accounting of what is the status right now. And we're finding that kind of overall, we're finding that about 40% of our waters have problems, they're impaired. And that can be different depending on what part of the state you're in, but kind of as a whole, that's a good sort of general number. Some parts of the state are getting better, some parts of the state are getting worse. We know that, but the impaired waters list is more of a reflection of getting that baseline accounting. The one universal that we see wherever we are in, in Minnesota is that the things that we do on the land really affect the quality that we're seeing in the water. So if we have good practices in place, if we're keeping soil in place so we don't have erosion, if we're holding back small storms, whether it's through rain gardens or through restored wetlands or, or buffers that happen in agricultural areas, we see benefits in the water quality. So I think the bottom line is that we need to adopt a water ethic. You know, the governor has talked about Minnesotans' love for our water resources and the fact that we care about our waters very much and we recreate in them and it's a part of our identity. And I think that that needs to be translated into recognizing that the, the choices that we make really do affect those water resources. So if we adopt a water ethic, if we think about how we're manicuring or maintaining our lawns or how we're conducting agricultural practices or other practices, Think about that in connection to what are the, the water impacts of that. That is a huge step forward towards really protecting those water resources that are in good shape, which there are still many in Minnesota, and then cleaning up and restoring those that are in poor shape. And we have our share of those as well.